Hello everybody and happy World Book Day! I am the author and illustrator Emma Stamp and I am here in my uh, basement studio today to have a little chat with you. I thought it might be kind of fun because obviously people can't actually come into your school but you can beam me into your school via YouTube. How exciting. Anyway, I thought maybe I would chat a little bit to you about me, my favourite subject, and then I could read to you from one of my books. How does that sound? That sounds pretty good. Right, so uh, what can I tell you? Well, uh, when I was your age, uh, which was back in the last century, uh, my very first book I ever read was called The Village Dinosaur, and it was by an author called Phyllis Arkell. You may have read it, I don't know, I, don't know. I think it's still in print. Anyway, uh, this was the first book that when I could read, I, uh, I read. And I remember it so clearly because we didn't have Amazon back in the last century. What we had to do, okay, this is crazy, right? We had to get a catalogue and we had to pick the book that we wanted to buy and we had to put a little tick by it and then we had to put it in an envelope and enclose the money and then we had to send it off. And then, get this, we had to wait a whole month for the book to turn up. Anyway, that's why that book was so exciting to me, because I had to wait a whole month for this book that I was just dying to read. So maybe that was the first book I ever read. I wonder what the first book you ever read was. Um, anyways, but my favourite book, okay, was called The Witches by Roald Dahl. And you may well have read that book because it is just so good. I love that book so much. And I was given it, I think it was about my 10th birthday. I was given it to my 10th birthday. I think it's when the book had first come out and it was in the hardback edition. Oh my gosh, it was so exciting. And literally, I just started reading on Christmas Day afternoon and then I didn't finish reading the book until Boxing Day. I just kept reading and reading and reading. And um, I did some sleeping in between, obviously, because that's probably quite a good idea to do. Uh, but yeah, I just loved that book so much. I also really loved reading uh, The Famous Five and Secret Seven books by Enid Blyton. And I secretly wished that I had five or seven friends and a dog that I could go and have adventures with and eat. I think was, they're always drinking lemonade and drink, eating biscuits. I so wished I could have that. But the problem was, okay, was that I lived like in quite a remote little area in Devon and um, I didn't have five or seven friends. Like there was only eight children in my year at school. Uh, and I think I only liked about three or four of them. So I was, I guess I could have had five friends, couldn't I? Anyway, there we go. So yes, I grew up on a farm in Devon, a sheep farm. And it's on this sheep farm that I met uh, Pig. Well, he wasn't really called Pig on the farm. He was called um, Salt Pork. And Salt Pork is kind of bacon. Uh, and it was he who gave me the inspiration to write my very first book, which was the unbelievable top secret diary of Pig. But that was many, many years later. Uh, yes, yeah, so I grew up on a farm and what I wanted to be, okay, when I was at primary school, I really, really wanted to be a vet. Uh, and I used to write books about how to be a vet and I don't know, I was crazy about being a vet. But anyway, it turned out that I wasn't very good at science and you kind of have to be good at science to be a vet. So that was kind of the end of that. But I was good at drawing. So I went to art college and I studied graphic design and then I went and had this big kind of glitzy career in advertising in London. And I worked for some big advertising agencies and I wrote some big TV commercials, like ones for uh, like the John Lewis Christmas commercials. I was involved in those, so it's all really good. But, um, but about five years ago, I just thought, you know what? I'd much rather write children's books. So I remembered this story about Pig on the Farm, about the fact that he was called Salt Pork and Salt Pork was kind of like a kind of bacon because it was basically we were going to eat him. And that's how the first story that I ever wrote came about. Uh, and anyway, so I've gone on since then. I quit my job and I've been doing this for five years and I've written, I think I've written four pig books. I think, I know I've written four pig books uh, and I've written uh, a picture book called Daddy Farty Pants and I've written, uh, I've written one uh, book called Pest, which is the first in a new series and there's gonna be two more of those. So there you go, that's me. Um, right, so what I thought is I would read you one of my books and I have picked Daddy Farty Pants, which was written by me and illustrated by Matt Hunt. Here we go. Daddy Farty Pants was a very windy bear. <gasps> Dad! It didn't matter where he was. Dad! Or what he was doing. Dad! His bottom blasts were epic. And to make matters worse, Daddy Farty Pants always, always, always blamed someone else. It was the baby. Wah! 
Die goed bij. Hm? It was the busker. The bear on the telly. Even when it was really obvious, Daddy Farty Pants never said sorry or pardon or excuse me, please. It was the snail. Oh, Dad. No, Daddy Farty Pants never, ever, ever owned up. <gasps> it was my boy. Dad! What did I do? <laughs> then, one day after school, Daddy Farty Pants met the lovely new teacher, Miss Lovely Bear. How lovely to meet you! But, as he went to shake her hand, Miss Lovely Bear let out a Roaring! <gasps> Everyone heard it. Oh, yuck! Disgusting! Poo What did you have for lunch? That pongs! Oh, my! Gross! Squelchy! But Miss Lovely Bear didn't say sorry or pardon or excuse me, please. Instead, she said, it wasn't me. It was him. <gasps> Daddy Farty Pants was shocked. W what? He was outraged. How dare you? He was upset. Everyone thinks it was me. But most of all, he was ashamed. It's never fair to blame another bear. I'm sorry, son. Oh, Dad. And that night he made a promise. Listen, kiddo, I'm going to be a very different bear from now on. I do beg my pardon. That was me. Oh, Dad. Daddy Farty Pants is still a very windy bear. But no matter where he is, <coughs> sorry. Shh. Or what he's doing. He always, always, always Oops, sorry. Owns up. I love you, Dad. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, if you'd like to find out any more about me, you can check out emmastamp.com or you can have a little look around my YouTube channel. You might as well while you're here. And I really hope that one day I do get to meet you for real. Uh, but until that day, I'm going to say goodbye and have a lovely World Book Day. Bye, everyone. Take care.